why this shouldn't be done. <coughs> the handling of this very important application was an absolute disaster for the village, and one can give little credit to 50% of the council membership who voted for it. I'm sure viewers of the recording of this meeting, available on YouTube, will not have been impressed. To those members who did see the whole picture, may I say thank you for appreciating the folly of this application. If the final outcome is one of support for Sedgemoor Planning Department of this ill-conceived application, one can only say that the legacy left to future generations will be an absolute contradiction to the wishes of the majority of this village. Imagine the traffic chaos at busy times, especially holiday traffic. Complete deadlock not only on the A38 but also the surrounding roads. Traffic from Western Supermare, East Brent, Lynchham, Rooksbridge, Burton Row, Station Road, traffic from Green, Barrow, Burnham, Mark, Highbridge, and of course Brent Street and Harp Road. All trying to reach the A38 and M5 motorway. Traffic trying to leave the M5 will find their mission impossible. All because Brent Old Parish Council failed to consult the people they are supposed to represent. It seems our only hope is for Somerset Highways to realise that traffic light scheme will not be successful and refuse to support this application. There is absolutely no benefit to the community in this application. All that is required is for Somerset Highways to reduce the maximum speed to 40 miles per hour from the Edith Mead roundabout to the Garden Centre, or preferably as far as the East Brent roundabout. And this would involve little expense from the highway's budget. I would finally like to enlarge on my last paragraph, paragraph 9, as follows. Brent Knoll does not want an inappropriate housing development placed outside the parish development boundary with a proposed access in a very dangerous position near the end of Brent Street. It would ruin the entry into the village as well as the beautiful views of the Knoll admired by many as they drive by on the A38 and M5. Brent Knoll is a very good example of what the countryside offers and let it remain so. Your decision on March the 2nd if supported by Sedgemoor District Planning Department, would result in the destruction of the entrance to this village, filling the pockets of the development company, and in return we are being offered a cut price, ineffective traffic light scheme, which will be of absolutely no benefit to this village. And finally, Mr Chairman, I'm sure that Sedgemoor District Council will be wondering how Brent Knoll Parish Council can be so out of touch with residents to arrive at your decision of March the 2nd, 2017. Thank you. Thank you. councillors has asked, would, would those that have spoken be kind enough to have let us have copies of what you said, please? Yeah. 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 On the basis I didn't come in with a script, how would you like me to leave mine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can make some. <coughs> well, this video is yeah. yeah. But I would For like those that have written it down, it would be useful. I don't think I actually got an answer to whether we are going forward with a proposal to implement a village design statement. And that should be discussed with the parish council. No. We will add it to the agenda for consideration next time, but it hasn't been come up before, so in the last two years. So we'll put it on our agenda for next meeting. Yeah, it cannot be discussed tonight, it's not on the agenda, unfortunately. We're not allowed to put things uh, on an agenda that have not been previously published. And since this, this development does not come up on the agenda, uh, we're doing nothing about it until the next, the next parish council meeting. Do you not have any other business? Because my well, we don't, we don't have any business no, specifically no. about the planning permission. Well, we have that as a report, sure. which is obviously agenda items for the first coming meeting. And, 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 and clearly that would go on there. Sure. Um, but it wouldn't actually be debated or discussed until the following meeting. Excuse me, can I just say that the point I was trying to make at the end of my um, presentation was that actually you haven't followed the guidelines 
So. You haven't had a referendum of the people, and it's, a, it's an extremely well, important development because of its implications, not because of its size. And I would like, I will leave this for you to read, um, and the, the particular points that you failed on are highlighted in there. Now, I would suggest you read it, and I would really like you to consider whether or not, actually, you ought to be called, convening a special meeting, because this is appalling, absolutely appalling. I'm sorry to say it, because as I say, I try not to say but when you sit there saying, oh, we can't... Dis I understand it's not on your agenda for tonight, but this is important and you need to take it as such. So I'll leave you this, which is the House of Commons Government Guidelines. OK? Thank you. Councillors, will there anybody want to make any particular point at this stage? So when will you discuss... Whether you will review your decision. If you're not going to do that tonight, will you no, do put that tonight. on next month or will you have a meeting like you're suggesting in between we special? That being the case, and the point I was making about departing from policy, which I hope Councillor Fillmore understands what that term means, I would like a full explanation as to why. If during the parish council meeting the decision is voted in favour as to why that decision to depart from policy is to go ahead. Chairman, if I can, um, I mean the issue is, <coughs> the issue has been raised about why I was in the room and and comments have been made a number of letters that have been sent to the central that I have taken a different course of action on this application than others. I have explained it to some, but I would be happy to to explain it why, if that's all right with you. Please do. The situation with my position on, on Central District Council Planning Committee is we have a standing order on that committee which basically says that we can either be involved at the parish council level or we can be involved at the district council level. We can't be involved at both. When we make the statement at the planning committee at Sedgemoor, we have to be able to say that we have taken no part in any discussions relating to a particular planning application at the parish council level. And that is why normally I leave the room and take no part. The application that was before us here, and also one potentially might be ahead of us in the future relating to Station Road, related to two exception sites, which are, as people have said, this policy of P4, which means they are adjacent to the development boundary but not within it. Those have meant that there have been discussions with the Parish Council with people relating to those sites well in advance of any submission of any planning application, and that has been over a period of months, on the basis that the Parish Council would be involved with the discussions, but would make no comment in terms of giving a, a, a definite yes or a definite no, but they were without prejudice discussions. The fact that obviously as a Parish Council I was involved in those discussions means that there was no way that I could stand up at Sedgemoor and say I have not been involved in discussions and therefore and leaving the parish council meeting. And so at that point, when we discussed those, right from the start, I explained to the parish council that I would be unable to represent at the district level because I was involved at the parish level. And therefore, whilst I would stay within the meeting here, if and when a planning application came forward, I would not be able to get involved with the planning committee should it ever end up at Sedgemoor's planning committee. So it's because of avoiding predetermination that I normally have to declare those interests because in effect I was already involved in the discussions anyway, I couldn't make that declaration at Sedgemoor, and that's why I'm then involved at the, the level here. Now obviously, no one knew what the situation would be in terms of what the planning applications would be when we first started talking about the discussions. But that same position will not, does not only pertain to that site, it will pertain to the site relating in Station Road, if and when that ever comes forward. But that is why it was different for me to be in or out of the room, but it's still based on the same policy um, that Sedgwell has this non-predetermination. But yeah, okay, Bob, but then what's your position at district level? In terms of this planning application? No, no, what's your none? position at district level? 
and chairman. then what you're leading to. I mean, I'm right, a district so councillor and I'm chairman of the planning committee. Right, so you're chairman of the planning committee. So yeah. if you vote for at uh, <laughs> district level, you already set a, pre a precursor that as the chairman of planning, if yeah. you vote for something, you set a dangerous precedent within Side Sedgemoor because of who you are and at district level. If any of us have discussed anything to do with you of planning, especially other council members asking for your advice uh, in previous years, you've always ran away from it because you couldn't be involved with anything at district level because your position on a, on a district, okay? So my argument is this, that whatever you do, whether you vote for or against, is uh, you, you, even if you discuss something, you should have declared that you've, you've already discussed it and any decision you'd have made would have set a dangerous precedent further up the chain, so you should have either abstained or just yeah. walked out of the meeting. That is, that is precisely why, as I say, at the district level, when and if this ever comes to planning committee, I am out of the room, I take no part in any discussion and I'm not allowed to vote on it. So I'm not in a position to use a district council position to... to but you you've already voted speaking recommend 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 locally. Honey, would you not talk to your fellow council on the planning committee about this at all? You no. haven't mentioned it we, at all? We are, I would, when the planning application is in, I am not in a position to discuss it with other district council members. Not in, informally either? No, because I mean, you're getting into the situation there of, of you can't use that position. That's why you have to make the declaration at one level or the other. You have to get involved at <coughs> one level or not. True. You can't play, you can't do both. So there's been no informal discussion with your colleagues? In no, I'm not discussing this application no. in detail with anybody. Right. <coughs> yes. I understand the point that Councillor Filmer is making about conflicting himself. However, as chairman of the planning committee, it only adds weight as to why there is a departure from his own planning policy. There is so many contradictions of the planning policy, the lack of affordable housing. The decision made by the parish council was almost predicated on the basis that the other planning, depart um, planning application was going to have an element of affordable housing. It's inconceivable that so many departures from his own policy haven't been raised in this parish council meeting. I think moving away particularly from our elected, elected representatives issues, there's an even bigger issue than that, and that is that very, very clearly on that video, there was um, a member of, of the parish council who spoke up very clearly, saying they were unhappy about the size of the entrance to the development, and the response it was totally slapped down, but the person that did it unbelievably and was allowed to do this was the developer themselves, and their actual response was to tell the councillor, which included all of you, because none of you turned around and said, oh yes, we knew that, you know, didn't you know that, that actually hadn't got a clue what he was talking about, that the plan had been changed, that the actual position and size of the entrance had been altered, and that there was an additional bridge been added. Now, as soon as you'd heard that, what I find inconceivable is why none of you turned around and said, we can't go any further with this, because actually you've just told us that we don't have any full information, and you could have changed everything on that plan, and we don't have a clue what's on it. Because if you didn't know that, you did not know what they were submitting. And actually, that, the person who tried to point this out got really shouted down and put in their place. And I would ask you, if you don't remember that, actually listen and look at that video again, because it's very, very clear that it was inappropriate behaviour by the developer towards the councillor, and it should never have been allowed. But it should have raised a lot of questions. And certainly, Bob Filmer, I would have hoped that in your position with your amount of experience that you would have picked up on that. No comment. <laughs> well, there's no comment before either. <laughs> So this, this might be delegated if you get this, this goes to the back of the line.
and then I can read. Add this to the next agenda. Excuse me. Can I just say, you're obviously going to try to add this to your next agenda, discussing what's happened tonight. But so far, your decision that you've backed the plan is still heading to Sedgemoor. In a few days, it could be delegated. And then the decision's already going to be made and it's going to be too late. And how are you going to put a stop to that? Because they can. They can actually. You put a break on it now. Yeah. The case officer said that she was probably going to have a meeting with the developer of the highways and yourself. And between them, they, was, they could make a delegated decision. Is that correct? I mean, in terms of, of, I mean, the planning officer will have to look at all the information that's before them, including the information that was sent about drainage boards uh, and other concerns. They have yet, obviously, to, to do that. They will also have to take on board whatever the county highways say in terms of the safety and appropriateness of the proposals in terms of the junction. Um, they can only come to a recommendation to grant permission if they get to the point where they are happy that all the issues that they believe have been raised have been adequately addressed by the developer. Um, that doesn't mean just because they have agreed something with the highways department, if there are still issues relating to drainage or other issues, they will still have to find ways of, of dealing with those. And if they can't be dealt with, then obviously that would be a reason for refusal. Um, but in terms of, of delegation, obviously that would would be the reason why it would come forward if uh, the officer can do a, a delegated decision um, if they are not in disagreement, in effect, with the, with the parish council. Mm -hmm. You're saying that you can't discuss or won't discuss this this evening. You don't have the opportunity. You can't. All right, the you can't. Lot, but I would suggest, mm -hmm. as I've already said, that you think about the importance independently, each one of you, as to whether you are actually happy to stand by the recommendation that's been put forward. Because I don't think you've got any grounds to do so. I think you need to go back and actually consult people properly and reconsider as I suggested. Chair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised Councillor Fulmer has made that statement about a delegated decision. As I keep on saying, this has all the hallmarks of a departure decision or departure policy that would have to be referred. It could not be a delegated decision. It's in contradiction of your own core strategy, Councillor Fulmer. Ultimately, that would, I mean, in terms of whether it's a departure from the core strategy, the, the applicant obviously would be making the, the case that theirs is is in line with with the policy P4 um, and that therefore it is in line with, with the policy should they go for a recommend to grant permission. That would be the basis on which they would, if they are looking for a granting permission, it would have to be that it is in line with policy because officer would, to make that delegated decision, would have to be doing it in line with policy and would therefore have to be saying that in effect the application does comply. Um, obviously, if it doesn't comply with policy, then you're absolutely right, it will be a departure. Um, but that is something that the, the officers will have to make the recommendation on as to whether they feel that it is compliant with policy or not. And my point being, you as an expert in planning, you should have been informing this parish council as regards to your own policies. You didn't during the parish council meeting. The, the, the parish... You should have been informing your neighbours. The parish council has... Uh, I don't want to necessarily speak for the parish council, I'm only just a member of it. Um, but the parish council had discussions, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, which was part of the reason why I couldn't declare an interest at, at the Sedgemoor level. Um, discussions have been made about what policy P4 entails, in, in and members were aware of, of policy P4. It was explained again at the last meeting. That was done on the basis of making sure that, that members of the public who were present understood the basis on which the council were considering it. Um, but certainly there have been many discussions about policy P4, both on that site and, and the alternative other site that we've, we've been looking at in, in Station Road on affordable housing. But members are well aware of, of policy P4 and, and the, um, the issues that it raises. I think the departures are wider than just P4. 
including your own core strategy. And that's one element to focus on, you're right. But there are element, other elements of your policy that you should have been focusing on. Don't really the whole run, mate. Mindful of the time, and we have got to have a formal meeting tonight. Um, we will consider the points that have been made regarding um, having a special meeting to review decisions at the point of, at the end of our meeting, to consider whether we put it on a special meeting or a next formal meeting. And that will be public knowledge when, it, when that is, is coming. But I did raise at the last parish council meeting, out of turn, but I did say that if you actually rejected the planning application now, it would have forced to have gone to a full uh, planning uh, committee hearing at Sedgemoor district level, because as you voted for it, and obviously uh, Councillor Filmer, who is actually the chairman of that, can't be involved at district level, but set a, a dangerous precedent anyway, if it is automatically will go to deferred um, anyway, so we are at great risk of it sneaking through anyway. A lot of us members, uh, the, the residents of the village, felt very strongly about the fact is that the development came in originally with affordable housing, latched onto the fact they could squeeze it through as a P4, then suddenly loaded all the questions at the second uh, public consultation, which was poorly advertised, um, but essentially there, whenever we asked any questions of the developer, we were, we were greeted with quite host, hostile um, uh, rebuffs back. But there was no, there was no um, question on there whether the residents uh, wanted it or not. It was all about, are you going to choose this traffic scheme or the next one? There was no question there of saying, do you want it anyway? So they had a biased view uh, at the second consultation. At the third one, it was just they just they were just slamming it through, wriggling it through on a P4 development. It's very slim. If you actually read the um, interested parties uh, from uh, Sedgemoor District Council, the conservation officer, she recommends a refusal because there's massive amount of breaches in what the developer has actually applied to do hasn't stated anything about the listed uh, monument called Brent Knoll at all in any of the applications or any of the details addressing any of the listed uh, buildings that the <coughs> development is actually will uh, compromise. So, at the end of the day, um, it's the seventh is when you've got a choice to either change your tune and actually send an email to Sedgemore and say, on second thoughts, um, we, we've had a, a reconsider and we, we're going against it. My argument is with Bob is that because of his level with district and here, whenever we've discussed anything, other uh, planning applications, he has never been drawn into any discussions at all, irrespective of what they've been. Why now does he change his uh, tune and actually get fully involved at local level? It's very dangerous to dabble. You either stick to your guns. I've known you for uh, years, Bob, and you've never been drawn into any development or planning inquiry or anything at all. Because you, you, you always say, I can't do it. I'm, I'm at a district level, and I'm compromising my position at district level. This is truly um, a compromised position. And it's quite true. You didn't explain to your other... Paris councillors about the implications of what P4 is and what it's all about. You might have had a side discussion with a few cronies beforehand, but all of that report that you did and the consultation with the developer, did you have a full consultation with the other parish councillors to explain all of the implications so they could make an informed decision, not bullied into a decision? I mean, to some extent, it's a little awkward for me, Chairman, in the sense that we have spoken about P4 within public meetings that we have held in this room. Correct. It has been explained. It hasn't been side meetings with cronies. I have tried to be as open and transparent with the Council right from the start of this as to what the position was and the position I would be in should a planning application <coughs> come forward. And I think it is, it is unfair to give the impression to other members of the public who are here that somehow there is something dodgy and underhanded that is being done. 
they have members. It's but like if well you were in the meeting, it's up to other members of the parish council right. to say whether they were aware. But if you were in the meeting, it would have gone. It would have gone against. There would have been no chairman vote. It would have gone against. You'd have stepped out of the meeting like you normally do. But, it would have gone against. But, to, but Warwick, to some extent, that's a that's a, and I know it doesn't make anyone here happier. But that was a situation of circumstance that it happened. That the votes split 50-50. Right. Had the votes split differently, whether I was in the room or not, may not have made a difference. We didn't know what the application was originally. We didn't know how votes were split. The involvement. Well, you threw the out. You threw the application out originally. And it's an again, inappropriate development. It was outside the boundary, yeah. and therefore there was no significant that, benefit again, to the parish. That, that comment was made at the last meeting, and I think we had, I had a discussion with, with Peter in the meeting about it. When we had discussions a long time ago about the various pieces of land that might come up, and there were about 11 pieces of land that were highlighted um, as potential development sites which had been put forward by people who owned the land, those pieces of those sites were brought forward to the parish council. We were asked to pick our priority sites as the ones we thought would be the best ones to go with. We picked a couple of sites. This site was not one of those two, but it was not ruled out as an inappropriate site. It was just not picked as one of the priority sites. The top priority site, which I think all of us would have been over the moon with, hasn't come forward because the landowner doesn't want to play ball. The other site is being looked at at the moment as well. It was the landowners and their agent who obviously decided to come forward with their proposal on this other piece of land, but it wasn't in the way that you're saying that it was ruled out as an inappropriate site for development. It was, it was not picked as one of the ones to go for in the priority sites. No, but I think the minutes of your meeting, was, it was ruled out due to traffic implications. Um, because Can I just say that we're going to have to close the well, place? Because I think most people but surely, surely the consensus of the village is, uh, is a heated discussion, and as chairman you did a casting vote, you actually listened to none of the issues that the, the general public during the meeting, <coughs> and as the chairman you could have gone with the general public. I'm sorry, I'm not going to debate that. Well, well I'm I'm saying. Saying. <laughs> you're, all you're arguing about, no. unfortunately, is for bringing personalities into it, and, and it's not fair. Can we, uh, <laughs> no, I said, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, we, we, will, we will not have a parish council meeting. Can I just as a uh, first time to the meeting for some years? Put my comments forward? No, no. Heard. sorry, it's too late. Oh. Too late. You, we yeah. asked people at the beginning who wanted to speak, and we were going to debate it, and that's what we said quite categorically. We've said to you, that we will consider matters of report at the end of our meeting, whether we will have an, a, an extraordinary meeting or add it to our next annual, uh, our, our next monthly meeting or not. We mm -hmm. review our decisions based upon the comments you've made. Can I just ask one question? No, to you? sorry. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're going to have to draw a line on this. Well, so sorry. One question and then simple yes or no. Have you read all the 89 letters yeah, against this proposal, including my own. I've lived here for 49 years myself. I live 200 yards from the junction. This is not a good decision to be made for the village. Could I ask? Are you going to consider those? Could I, could I ask which members here voted for this? Because I, I don't know. I asked who the members of this committee were. And that gentleman over there refused to tell me. Could you put your hands up if you voted for it, please? No, it's not. Why? Is it secret? No, it's not secret. Could you tell me who voted for it? It was a vote taken on a democratic manner. And anybody who says it isn't, I would dispute that. It was a democratic vote, and it's a council decision. Irrespective of individuals, at the ultimate end of it all, any process, any decision that's it's made secret. is not secret. Well, okay, it's well, a council decision. Me. Who voted for it then? You're going to have a meeting. It's not a secret. Well, it's not a secret. I'm very disappointed with this council. Very disappointed. Well, 
been a few days. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 Look, if people are going to stay and listen, can you please, can you please give us respect that we could have our meeting in a proper way? <coughs> and can I also reinforce that we do not expect interruptions during the council meeting? And if there are counts, if there are interruptions, the meeting will be suspended. <laughs>